Hey, Mr. Sanders, what you got there? Oh, some chocolate. Oh, man, that's not like that Russell Stover stuff. Yeah, some loving student brought it in. And, yeah, you know, know, someone who appreciates all the work we do. Yeah, I know. Not too many of them do that, I right. think. <laughs> hey, so we're going to talk about energy transformations today. Yep. Well, that, I think there's some energy in there. There most certainly is. Probably like 600 calories in that little thing right there. We can only hope. <laughs> so there's calories, which is energy, and we're going to talk about the transformation, not the math of it, but that's later. And so what's happening is as he's eating that into his, in his face, it's going down his throat and down into his belly. And as it goes into his belly, it's changing from one type of energy to the next. And we're talking about there's actually two varieties of changes. There's exothermic, which is happening right now in his belly, and there's endothermic. I'm exothermic. You're exothermic. There we go. So um, that makes sense. Okay, let's talk about this. First of all, this is the study of thermochemistry. Now, if you think about the word thermo and chemistry, now um, there's things called thermal blankets, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, what's the thermal? Uh, thermal underwear, long johns. Yeah, thermal underwear. So what's the word thermo mean? Heat. Heat. Yeah. So, so this I got is caramel th sucking my teeth. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So this is heat chemistry, the chemistry of heat or of energy. Uh -huh. So we're going to study the science of energy. Briefly, there's a lot more to what oh, yeah. we're going to talk about. Then. These are all going to be in chemical reactions. There's yes. other types of energy that happen. Like when you drop a ball, physics will study that, like yeah. Uh, yeah, motion and stuff like that. So we're going to study the energies in chemical reactions. So here we have a power plant, and the power plant is producing, there's a chemical reaction taking place inside here, mm -hmm. producing some smoke and some energy. Yep. Okay, and here we have something that's lit up that's also producing some energy. Okay, now let's talk about energy just in general. Ooh, that one's not caramel. Yeah, I like the coconut or that. something. Yeah, I like the coconut. That's one thing I do like. So here we have a guy pushing a ball up a hill. All right, now what is technically the definition of energy is the capacity to do work. Um, or. Or to supply heat. Yep. And so this guy is pushing a ball up a hill, so he is, well, he's doing work. Mm -hmm. Actually, energy isn't work. It's actually the capacity to do work. It's right. different. Okay, so... Um, so energy doesn't actually have mass. This is something intriguing. A lot okay. of people, they're not the same thing. No. Energy and mass, like in the universe, there's essentially two things. There's matter that has mass, uh, like like the pen here, or Mr. Sam's here, he has mass. And I'm acquiring more mass. He's acquiring more mass as he eats more chocolate. And um, energy, but energy has no mass. Right. And we can't actually measure it directly. We can only measure it by what it does or changes That's in energy. exactly correct, yes. And so we'll actually do that in the next podcast and subsequently, yeah. Now, there are lots of different kinds of energy, Mr. Sams, mm -hmm. but in our pet case, we want to talk about what's called chemical potential energy. Now, I have a picture of a cliff bar. And I have a chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I'm more of the cliff bar type. I'm going to ride my Ooh, bike. Ooh, raspberry. On, oh, yeah, there you go. I'm going to ride my bike on uh, Saturday to Castle Rock from here. I've actually started walking. I you actually, walk. We got a treadmill. We got <laughs> Mr. a treadmill. Sam's walk. We got a treadmill, and I've been walking a mile and a half every night. Thank nice. I ro I ran five miles. I don't want to hear it. Four thirty in the morning on my treadmill. I don't okay. Hear it. So in chemical energy, it's energy stored in the structural units of chemical substances. The what? The structural units. You know, probably should put a new word there. It's in the bonds. Bonds. The chemical bonds. So as you take this piece of chocolate, there's bonds in there holding the chocolate together and holding that nice yummy raspberry cream together. And when my body digest that, it actually breaks down those bonds and the energy that's stored in there become other forms of energy in my body. If you've taken biology, you know that that turns into ATP. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So it's energy stored, it's, in, it's stored in the bonds. And now, right now, is it, it's released as he eats it. And since this is a chemistry class, we are most interested in chemical energy. Mm. There's mechanical energy, there's solar energy, there's lots of different energies. But we in chemistry class are more interested in uh, chemical energy. How many calories are in these? I'm going to have to walk a little further tonight. Yeah, Mr. Sams, I don't know. You've probably eaten way too many of those. Two pieces, Yeah. 160 calories, and I've already had three, three <laughs> pieces. Yeah, I'm going to have to walk a couple extra miles. These are now. about 200 calories right here. Um, can of soda, about 200 calories. Yeah, so you've had more than a can of soda here and just sitting here at this Eating three chocolates, holy cow. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Okay, so here's the idea. If you break the bonds, it releases energy, yep. which is exactly what was happening as he's, as he's still. It's consuming this mm. chocolate. And the opposite is true. When you form the bonds, when you make the bonds, which typically happens actually in the, the plant itself yep. as, it's, as it's growing. The chocolate plant. The chocolate mm. plant. There you go. Cocoa plants and sugar plants. And that's the other thing. Yeah, they get their energy from the sun. They absorb energy from the sun, and they turn that um, sun energy into chemical energy in the, in the, in the uh, glucose molecule. And then you consume it yeah. and turn it right back in. It's okay. the circle of life. So there is 
Um, so now let's talk about energy because there's actually uh, the, the thing that's interesting is about talk about is the flow of energy. Right. You see, energy can only flow in one direction. Right. The cows eat the grass. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. So let's you know before we do that, Mr. Sams, let's talk about something important. Actually, a short video clip is in order. Don't yeah, you think? I think so. Yeah, I'm freezing out here. Yeah, that's pretty cold. Huh? Yeah. yeah I'm sick and you're letting the cold in. Hey, letting it cold in? Yeah. That's like bad Come science, on. Mr. Sam. You're like garbage. You let the cold in. I'm not letting the cold what in. What are you talking about? Yes, you are. I'm here. It's warm, and I and, and the cold is is coming at me because it's cold outside. That's incorrect, Mr. Sam. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm. I'm always serious. So, what happens then? Well, actually, what's happening is you're letting uh, heat always goes from hot to cold. So actually, we're letting the hot air out. Which so by definition. So instead of me getting cold, I'm actually getting less hot. That's a correct. So my energy is going out to the cold air outside. That is correct. Yes. Oh, that's kind of weird, but I feel cold. How does that work? Because energy is leaving your energy. body. Oh, okay. So I have less energy, therefore I get I feel cold, even though I'm not getting cold. That's I'm getting correct. less hot. That's correct. Oh, I like it. Hey, Very cool. Let's go one other place to talk about this, okay? okay? All right. So here I am at my refrigerator. Now, if I open the refrigerator, of course, the purpose of the refrigerator is to, to make things cold. So this water bottle is what's well, cold because it's been in the refrigerator overnight or whatever. And why is... It cold. Hmm. You mean less warm than it was when you put it in? Right. The answer actually is is that it takes the energy out of the water. So when this was warm water and it was placed in the um, refrigerator, warm water then goes back here. And back here you'll find these coils. There's actually, you actually can't see them, but there's little coils. And those coils are very cold. And so the energy from the warm water here goes through the air, whatever, and then hits there and gets cold. That means the energy is being moved somewhere. You have to move energy, always hot to cold. Where does it take it? Well, follow me. Where it goes is it actually goes back behind here. So if I move the refrigerator out, you can't see it, but this area is all kind of warm. And actually down here even, yeah, you can feel that, Mr. Yeah. Sams. It's warm, isn't it? And so it's warm. And so if you feel the back of your refrigerator, you'll discover that it's warm because it's moving the energy from the refrigerator to the back of the refrigerator. So an interesting, Out into the room, then. Out into the room. So an interesting thing. Let's say it's a really hot summer day, and you are... Well, you're hot, and so you say, "Well, I want to cool off." Well, yeah, my room. I'm going to go open the fridge, so and I'm going to stand right in front of the freezer and look at all of Mr. Winstead's weird enchilada things. Enchilada meals. Yeah, but the problem. But, oh, it's it's nice and cool if it I'm is, hot. You know, it is cool, Mr. Sam. But you know the problem? It's that can't cool my room, right? It actually will heat up your room, because what you're going to do is you are the warm air from the room is now warming up the fr freezer. Oh, the coils in the back again. And then the coils in the back is going to then take it back and... And they're going to dump it out the back of the fridge again so and warm the room. And since it's not a perfect system, um, it's, it does not a perfectly efficient system, it will actually heat up your house in the long run. Not in a few short seconds, it will cool you down, but it will actually heat up your house.